Dilan Trivedi, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So we were actually discussing about chapter number 2 that is Total Quality Management. In this particular chapter up till now we are discussed about the different basic tools and techniques to improvise the quality. Now let us understand in today's lecture about the 7 QC tools. This is a special tools, 7 quality control tools. So the basic 7 quality control tool includes check sheets, scatter diagram, fishbone diagram, histogram, parato diagram, stratification, control charts. Now in Japanese it is believed that and they are having experience that 95% of the work place problem will, will get solved by the implementation of this 7 QC tools. So what we are going to do is we are going to learn about each and every tool with the help of even case studies so that we get the idea that how these QC tools are being implemented and what will be the effect. Okay. Now this QC tools was basically given by the Ishikawa and we all know about Ishikawa right now. Okay. So let's get started. The first tool is the check sheet. Now the check sheet is basically a tool which is uh, actually the tabular representation of the data. Right. We all have heard about the check sheets. Right. It has been used in number of uh, workshops even. Right. Whether this uh, number of components mentioned in a checklist is okay or not. We use that checklist. Right. But about check sheet the story is somewhat different. So let us understand that thing properly. So check sheet is nothing but it is a data collection uh, in a very easy way. Right. And it is very very effective for the quick analysis purpose. It is also called as a tally sheet because we can uh, represent the data and we can tally that data. That's why it is also called as a tally sheet. In this particular check sheet we are having this kind of tabular representation in which on the left uh, row we are writing the problem on, on this particular area we are writing about the different different uh, activities right and for each and acti every activity we can indicate through this roman figure right let us have a one example so that you can get a better idea now this is an example of again a casting industry we just need to represent the types of defect coming out of the casting product right and we want to represent that defect with respect to the number of different days right so that we can represent in this way so the different types of defect would be like chipped edges surface cracks structural cracks insufficient cover and the poor finish now we want to represent that particularly on monday which kind of defect was present in the particular finished part so we are indicating like this for the tuesday we will again uh, represent all that data same with the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday and at the end we will come out with the total number of defect right. So the number of defect which one is higher that is chipped edges is higher in this representation right. So corrective action need to be taken first right and in another way if you observe this thing carefully then on the Monday itself we find the chipped edges defect is higher. So we had taken some corrective action so it has been reduced to Tuesday still it was higher so again we go for uh, just analysis of that so we actually able to reduce to up to 2 from 7 defect right. So on the Saturday last day we can see that the chip edges defect has been reduced to 1. So in that way we can easily take the corrective action if we are having this kind of proper representation of the data right. Otherwise you can think of the figure would not uh, be limited to 19 it can reach up to 100 defects even right. So it is easy to take the corrective action when we are having this kind of tabular representation of data. Now the second QC tool is the stratification. So stratification is nothing but it is data collected using check sheet need to be meaningfully represented graphically ok. A technique that actually separates the data gathered from a variety of sources so that some pattern can be seen right. If we are having some this kind of graphical representation then just by viewing itself we can get the data where does the problem arises right. But in some of the book out of the 7 QC tools instead of stratification in many of the books 
process flow diagram is also been mentioned so i will going to cover that process flow diagram also so that you can get the idea about both stratification as well as process flow diagram let us understand this stratification first of all with the alpha 1 case study right we are using three different machine in industry right and all the three machineries are giving some number of different different product okay now we are going to represent that number of defect coming out of all the three different machines with respect to time right so we can easily see from the graph itself that the number of defect in machine number 3 is higher as compared to number of machine 1 and 2 right so this graph actually helps us to take the corrective action in very immediate way right as well as you can see that at what particular day the number of defect is right say for example on second date we got the defect now five in machine number 1 in machine number 2 we see the defect quantity was 20 and in machine number 3 it was greater than 30 right so we can have a quick outlook of the defect as well as we can take the corrective action that which machine need to be corrected first so in this way the stratification helps a proper graphical representation of data of defective quantity now as i told in some of the book instead of stratification qc tool mentioned is process flow diagram so that is actually more easy we need to have a flow diagram right let's say this is a flow diagram of alarm first of all we start the or set the alarm so alarm ring we need to get up we hit snooze button so there will be a some delay so again alarm will ring then we climb out of the bed so that is a routine which we actually usually follow throughout a day so it is in this process flow diagram act, entire activity has been represented graphically right so if there is some problem in between we need to take corrective action for that which can be represented on the right hand side like this that you does not get up so for that a snoozing device has been provided so there will be some delay and again that alarm will ring right so we can take this kind of corrective action if there is some delay in this way also quality can be improvised now the third tool and a very famous name that is a pareto diagram this pareto diagram is based on the pareto principle this pareto principle is very very famous as 80 20 principle also because in this pareto principle it has been written as that 80 percentage effect are contributed by the 20 percentage causes in the respect of quality we can take it as 80 percentage of defect will be generated due to the 20 percentage of your mistake we can take in that way also that if you correct the 20 percentage mistake you can improvise your result by 80 percentage pareto says that but in real life practice the there is some deviation although we are not getting exact 80 20 but more or less the principle uh, follows that if we need to correct uh, if we correct at least 20 percentage mistake we can improvise a lot we can take in a basic way like this okay so in the case of pareto diagram we are having a bar type chart in which the various factors that contribute to an overall effect are arranged in order according to the magnitude of their effect right say for example let us take the example so that you will get the idea again i am taking a example in which there is a number of defects in a particular product such as fragile wire crack hole flash slow faulty trim right whenever we are doing any material removal process we can get this kind of different different defects right we are representing that defects right now the fragile wire kind of defect was almost 1200 so we will have a graphical representation but that defect will be represented first then the quantity of crack defect is higher that is 800 so we will have a bar of that next to it then the whole defect is higher so in that order we are arranging all the different different defect right now once we are having this graph as per the quantity of defect then what we can see is see this slope we are having this slope right that is 
parts okay so in this graph you can see this 80 percentage right come to this 80 percentage this 80 percentage is the correction uh, uh, required right so 80 percentage defect is due to the 20 percentage problem uh, this fragile wire and crack are the two problems we need to correct right if we correct these two problems out of entire this number of different different defects associated we can actually improvise the result by 80 percentage that is the theory of the Pareto diagram so they believe that don't try to correct all the different defects at least focus on the 20 percentage you can improvise a lot so from this representation if we correct fragile wire and crack defect we focus only on that two part we can improvise the quality a lot so that is the principle of Pareto the another tool is a histogram now histogram is used to find out the frequency right so how to find out that frequency or the occurrence rate of the defect for that again we are having a graphical representation in which we are using a bar chart right which represent a cause of problem as a column and the frequency of each cause of a problem as a height of the column right let us take the uh, it, it is represented like this as shown in this figure but let us take the example so that you can get the clear idea about it okay now uh, let's say we are having this online classes okay and we want to see that at what time the number of students attend the classes highest right so we are having this kind of representation time wise one class we are having at 6 to 6 30 6 then we are having next class at at 6 30 to 7 in this way we are having a classes up to 10 to 10 30 and on other another axis we are having a representation of number of attendees right so we need to find out at what time the attendees is highest right frequently if we do this chart we find out that the number of attendees is highest at 8 to 8 30 so the most important activity need to be or the most important lecture need to be arranged at 8 to 8.30, right? So in this way, we can take some corrective action. The most important activity of the production can be taken with the help of this kind of analysis, right? So the defect can be reduced, right? If you say, for example, if you take the activity of highest importance at 6 to 6.30, but at that time, say, for example, the workers are not available, that kind of issues are there, so that can lead to the quality problem but what if the highest worker and the efficient worker are available at 8 to 8 30 so plan your activity according to that so you can reduce the problem with the quality okay so in this way also quality can be improvised the another chart we are going to study and the last chart for the today's lecture that is a control chart this chart actually gives the idea about the process variation with respect to time okay we need to set the upper control and lower control limit like right? so it becomes easy to track whether the process is under control or not right the appearance of this control chart is like this in which we measure something with respect to time and we set one limit upper control limit and lower control limit if in the chart area any of the quantity exceeds this range then the corrective action is required the basic fundamental is like this and the control chart are normally of two types variable and at another one is attribute type variable means such quantity we measure is weight length time if we are measuring such quantity then it is called as a variable and attribute with such as we if we measure the paint defect we measure the number of errors in invoice some of this kind of uh, defect if we measure then it lies under the attribute let us take the example now this is an example of uh, protein we take right present in the particular wheat flour right we all eat chapatis right so what is the ratio of protein and we are checking at some particular time so that time duration is representation at x axis and protein at the y axis now we set the limit that the level of protein must be in between this 10.50 gram to say for 13.25 gram so the lower and upper limit has been set now who gives this criteria 
again if this protein is there so that can be uh, defined by FSSAI if it is related to food so the production should be in this range only but if any point of time if this protein level is exceeding that limit then we need to take the corrective action right but what is the advantage of this graphical representation we can easily get the idea about the defect and we can easily take the corrective action okay still there are some uh, two other quality control tools but we will continue that in next lecture that's all for the today's lecture thank you